How you doing fam bam? This is Chris Mizo here and I want to talk to you about AMD's B650 chipset motherboards. That might be the way to go, especially if you are a gamer or you are a smaller type of creator that is just starting up and you just need something necessary just to begin with your AMD Ryzen 7000 series. I'm going to go over some of AMD's B650s and B650E motherboards because you actually might benefit out of it and that maybe the X670E might be a little bit too much for you or the X670 might be a little bit too much for you. B650 does offer a lot for its current value. I will also go over Asus, Gigabytes, and I'm also going to go through Ace Rock. I'm going to go through details to let you know exactly what to look for, especially if you're trying to purchase a motherboard, whether it's for gaming or content creation. Now, if you're looking for the more value side of things, it is rumored that MSI will have the best options for MSI's MAG B650 Edge Wi-Fi motherboard features memory capacity of up to 128 gigabytes with up to four slots for DDR5 memory that can go up to 6400 megahertz in speed or even more it does even have an hdmi display and it has a display port which will not be on a lot of other b650 motherboards that i will talk about shortly but anyway all of msi's b650 and the b650e they will not have pci express 5.0 in any of those motherboards they will have pci express 4.0 with up the x16 they will have expansion slots if you want to add more the x16 slot for pci express 4.0 they will also have another x16 slot for pci express they will also have an x1 for pci express 3.0 and a pci express 4.0 for x2 msi's edge wi-fi b650e will also give you a m2 drive that will allow pci express 5.0 that is mvme that you can use you just cannot use any graphics cards or anything that is X16, that's PCI Express 5.0, that will not be usable in MSI's boards. So if that's already out of your option and you're looking for PCI Express 5.0 and you just want to go into the new generation, MSI is not going to be the board for you if you're looking for a B650 or B650E board. MSI does offer it in the other models such as the X670s or the x 670e but i do feel that they are priced pretty ridiculous when it comes to that because it is really expensive for what they are charging but if you have the money and you just want to spend it on msi's motherboards you can go ahead but i feel like it wields too much power for personal use unless you're going to go do some crazy overclock and you're going to water cool it but personally that is my opinion i want to just share some ideas for you guys especially if you just want to join AMD's newest Ryzen 7000 series. MSI's Edge Wi-Fi B650E does offer a Wi-Fi 6E, so that will be usable in their motherboard. And it does up to 20 gigabits of USB speed, which is USB 3.2 Gen 2, and is also a six layer PCB board. That's just one of their boards. You can expect the price for that very motherboard, $289.99 USD. MSI MPG B650 Carbon Wi-Fi will be $329.99 USD. MSI's Mag Tomahawk Wi-Fi will be $239.99 USD. So the prices aren't that bad compared to its X670. I want to talk to you also about ASRock's B650 motherboards and their B650E motherboards. If you're looking for PCI Express 5.0, they do have it for both X16 and they do have X4. They do have some great features. Personally, I do like the sound of it. They do feature PCI Express 5.0, X16, and they even do have USB 4.0, which can go up to 40 gigabits per second. SROC's Tai Chi motherboard B650 also has a power stage of 24 plus 2 plus 1. They do offer Intel's Ethernet connection, which is their killer 2.5 gigabits connection. It does offer Wi-Fi 6E, and it does use a DDR5 memory as up to 128 gigabytes for DDR5, up to 64 or 6600 megahertz that can be used on this motherboard. And the really nice feature it also has CMI 2.1 on the back panel, and it even features USB 40 gigabits per second. That connection right there, you can go up to 8K to 60 frames per second. But more importantly, you want to know a little bit more details about the PCI Express 5.0 X16. 
PCI Express 4.0 at X16. And support by the CPU, it will have PCI Express 5.0 that is supported with X4 storage for NVMe. So this would be a great gaming motherboard, especially if you don't really need as much USB connections, because really that's the only upside when you do purchase something that is an XX70 or XX70E, if you're gonna use a ton of PCI Express slots. If you are not, if you don't plan to occupy any of those lanes, then it's just gonna really be more of a waste of money. It's more gonna be a showpiece that you spent all this money on. ASRock's Tai Chi E650 motherboard does offer a ton of features, especially if you're just starting into content creation or you're just gonna use it for gaming because it will be 100% excellent for it. So just so you know, the B650 is a ATX form factor. So when you do install it into a case, remember that it is a large improvement over its b550 as that was over 16 plus one phases got to talk to you about asus's b650 there's not a lot of information on it i'm not too sure if they're going to use any x16 pci express 5.0 lanes on them but i am sure they're going to have x4 pci express 5.0 nvme lanes more than likely you'll probably some see some pci express 4.0 lanes just because it will be more budget friendly if you don't really care for pci express 5.0 then that might be the way to go because most graphics card can't run up to that type of speed just yet we can't even go up to pci express 4.0 as it is let alone pci express 5.0 so it's not going to be a bad thing if the only thing you will have on that motherboard is a graphics card but i can say this it will have 128 gigabytes of max capacity for your ram and it will be up to 6600 megahertz of speed for ddr5 rog strix b650e it will also feature m2 pci express 5.0 x4 and they will have two of them they will both be running off the cpu it will have 1x usb 3.2 gen 2 it will also have 8x usb 3.2 gen 2 and two usb 3.2 gen 1 and up to 8x of usb 2.0 we'll have well, wi-fi 6e and one 2.5 gigabit connection for that motherboard it will have dynamic oc switcher pbo Core flex. Another thing that I have to say, if you do buy a budget board, you may not have the other capabilities such as easy flash, BIOS reset, certain buttons and switches you might not have the luxury of having. You might not have the trouble code LED screens. You might not have certain features that a X670 would have. If you're just using it strictly for gaming and you're not gonna worry as much about overclocking as much, then this is the best way to go, and especially for the pricing. Asus X670E can cost you 1,000 USD for their Asus Extreme, which is pretty crazy, especially for a motherboard. And I don't see a motherboard really being worth that much, especially if all you're gonna really do on this motherboard is game. I gotta talk to you about Gigabyte. To me personally, Gigabyte seems to be the best deal out of all of them especially when it comes to B650E's Worst Master, because surprisingly, that is still a beast. So, so similar to the X670E, which are smaller features such as the extra USBs, which I know the X670E version doesn't have that much USBs anyway. Instead of having two USB-Cs, just like how the X670E has, this only has one USB-C connection at 20 gigabits per second. Now the digital VRAM design is gonna be a little bit different. The power stages are 16 plus two plus two. The thermal conductivity pad, it also does come with it at seven watts per K value. And believe it or not, it still has four PCI Express 5.0 NVMe slots. It does still contain one PCI Express 5.0 at X16 lane, which is great for the next generation of gameplay. It does feature up to 128 gigabytes of memory. Another thing that's slightly different compared to the bigger sister, it will only have HDMI port compared to USB-C for display connection. It doesn't really matter as much, especially if you have a graphics card that's gonna hook up to it anyway, unless you're planning to use the integrated graphics from the actual processor more than likely you're probably not and if you're not that it's not really as big of a deal it does use the very same audio chip the chip for the LAN is going to be slightly different as it uses 
uh, Intel's 2.5 gigabits. And the wireless chip is gonna be slightly different as it will use AMD's chip instead of Intel's chip, which is RZ616. On its actual chipset, it does have PCI Express 4.0 at X16. It also offers a secondary PCI Express 4.0 at X16. If you combine them both, they will split down to X8. The same idea, the same concept, that i spoke about the x670e board if yeah matter of fact if you haven't seen that board i do have the card right above me about it and you can see more details on it if you want to have an idea of differences from it alone it does feature the same m2 at mvmes where you can go up to pci express 5.0 at x4 it does have slightly less usb connections it doesn't have the display for the usb c and it still has the q flash button the c most clear button so it still has certain features that you're looking for and it is also a atx form factor so that makes it a, a lot easier for you to install motherboard one of the questions is when will these motherboards release it's going to be really soon it's going to be between uh, late october to early november once you see these b650 and the b650e boards to be released and another question you might have is any of these motherboards have ddr4 and i gotta tell you they don't none of these motherboards do amd is strictly going straight into ddr5 they're getting their feet wet they're fully invested into that as it is already if you're not looking to get into ddr5 there's nothing wrong into getting intel's motherboards like the z690 or the z790 because they still both use ddr4 and you can still get to enjoy pci express 5.0 if you want to i have just about all the parts that i need to build this amd build i'm excited to build it with you guys i will have it up it's been crazy busy because you can see all the content i'm trying to pump out to you guys because i'm going to share all this information with you because i want to make sure you get the best pc out there especially for the best value because of how expensive everything is when it comes to pc parts I know it's ridiculous as it is, and that's another video that I can talk to you about. So fan bang guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who is into tech, make sure you share this video with them. And also if not part of the big wonderful fan man, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my Twitter handle. It's the same as my IG and TikTok as well. So fam man, guys, what do you think of these AMD B650 or B650E motherboards? Is it something that is on your radar or do you feel like everything is still pretty expensive, especially for what you're looking for? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.